I know you all have that one burning question. How can I finance my own PV system? Would I get any incentives for my PV system? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about and discuss now. In the last lecture, I spoke about how retail prices of electricity and how a distinction can be made between utility and home when comparing grid versus socket parity. In this lecture, I will discuss the motivation to invest in PV from a financial perspective the real estate assessment dilemma regarding installed PV systems, and finally, the available alternative financing options to realize your own PV system. You've seen why investing in PV is crucial and beneficiary. Yes, one of the reasons to invest in PV is a cleaner future as a renewable energy source of energy, but the real financial motivation to invest in PV can only be achieved by improving the technology to the point that we can reach full grid parity. If we have grid parity, the reasons to invest in PV are plenty. The PV system is a source of private wealth for either the individual or the company as a whole. Alternate finance options are also open, which now becomes cost-effective way to finance PV. Some locations around the world have reached grid parity, and many others are approaching grid parity, which makes investing in PV very attractive. If we do not have grid parity, that means the PV cannot be a viable investment on its own. I will talk in the following video about different financial incentives that some governments use to still make investing in PV attractive economically. However, even if PV doesn't make complete sense from a financial standpoint in certain locations, people may still opt to invest in the system because they want to make a difference environmentally. There is a continuing dilemma on how to designate a PV system in real estate. For example, if you buy a house with an existing PV system, is it adding property value or not? These are questions which make financial viability of the house better or worse. If you buy the house and you don't live in the same house for the lifetime of the PV system, or something like 25 years, the question now becomes if the system is actually adding value or not, which again is country and market specific. Since this is a relatively new field of economy, it mainly depends on the planned installation, energy yield, and how appraisers look at a PV system. This potential change in housing value can also affect property taxes as well. One way through which PV can be evaluated is by using the PV value model by Sandia National Laboratories, which are a major research and development lab based in the United States. This PV value model appraises and figures out the possible real estate property assessment and is already being used by real estate agencies in the U.S. for properties with existing PV systems. The model can also be extended for mortgage underwriting, credit analysis, and insurance claiming. Let us now look how the model calculates PV value in detail. Initially, after making an account in the PV value assessing tool online, the location data is entered in terms of latitude and longitude. Once the tool identifies the location, the property information is introduced where initially the type of property is specified. The property which needs to be assessed could be residential, commercial, or even a utility scale property. Secondly, the PV project type is defined. The PV project could be an existing PV system, or one which is under construction, or even be a PV system that is proposed for construction in the future. Now, the system specifications are defined in terms of system size in watts and the array specifications in terms of tilt and azimuth. The inverter specifications are now entered. The PV value tool takes into account the size of the inverter again in watts, along with the replacement cycle and the warranty of the chosen inverter for the PV system. The discount rate is specified by the various rates that are suggested by the tool. In utility factor, the user can enter the present utility rate at escalation rate. Finally, the tool calculates the PV value of the chosen system for the property by taking into account the data entered in this process. Third-party leasing is an alternative way of financing which already operational with different popular companies. This method of financing is carried out with really big electronic stores where the customer can buy the PV system. In third-party leasing, the company buys the PV system and leases it out to the customer. The customer hence does not have to pay all the upfront costs and they end up paying a smaller amount per electricity they consume. Third-party leasing has become increasingly popular, but some customers got into this type of financing without really understanding how the scheme works, which also resulted in some unsatisfactory customer experiences. But in summation, third-party leasing is a very vi viable option, but it's also pretty tricky. 
Aggressive price lowering is a different approach where the customer can buy the complete installation service of a PV system. In this package, the customer is offered in-store consultation, design services, as well as installation, maintenance, and complete monitoring of the system. Aggressive price lowering schemes are already operational with a successful implementation in the UK. This scheme offers a complete solar finance package, which claims to reduce the customer's energy bills by up to 50%. So, to recap, in this video, you learned about the motivation to invest in PV for both the case of grid parity and also when grid parity has not yet been achieved. You then learned about the available alternative financing options for PV systems and their respective pros and cons. In the following video, we will study the concept of feed-in tariffs and net metering.